As another year comes to an end, we wanted to create something special for the Redmen TV viewers to sit back and enjoy over the holiday season. Armed with a list of every player with at least 50 Premier League appearances for the Reds, you voted in your thousands to create the ultimate countdown of the greatest footballers to don the red shirt since the Premier League began in 1992. So pop the kettle on, put your feet up and enjoy as we reveal your top 50 Liverpool players of the Premier League era. To kick things off, a man still plying his trade in the middle of the park for Jürgen's Reds. He's had some ups and downs since signing in 2017, but is still capable of producing great moments and is clearly a big character in the dressing room. In at number 50, it's Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. I'm surprised he's made the top 50, if I'm honest. Like, Oxlade-Chamberlain's had good moments in Liverpool shares, but they've been few and far between. Like The goal against Man City in the Champions League. The first touch is sublime and then the second touch is obviously the goal and it's, it's out of this world. It's got to be that, oh, he can hit one against Manchester City. You know, it was just a perfect combination of the result that was going for us. That was Liverpool, our absolute pomp, that, you know, heavy metal football that you talk about, going toe to toe with one of the best sides in world football at the time. And of all the things that people wanted from Oxley Chamberlain, that is the one. And I think the commentary goes side by side, but it makes it an iconic moment. But that, that touch, and that moment, and just his general all-round play and how dynamic he made us uh, as a result, yeah, that was that was the best of Oxlade Chamberlain. The memory that springs to mind is the goal against Man City. A lot of people remember the Champions League goal, but if you think of the Premier League version of the goal, the, the game that we won 4-3, uh, I was in that ground and he started off what was an amazing day for Liverpool, that they were they showed he could compete against Man City and really go toe to toe with them. He was such a difference maker for us, a driving force behind that side, and you know one of the reasons that we get we do so well in the Champions League that season. You know, on and off the pitch, you know, terrific. I mean, at one point I thought he might have been a good future captain of Liverpool because he was, you know, um, just well spoken and you know had his head in the right place. I mean, we I think we all remember him protecting Coutinho in an interview when he was being badgered over moving. Um, yeah, he's a great guy and a terrific footballer. He is an incredible footballer. He brings something completely different to that Liverpool side and maybe even to the current Liverpool side, but injuries have purely hampered him. Up next is a man who might consider himself unlucky not to be higher up on the list. This Brazilian midfielder took a little while to earn his place in a strong Liverpool midfield, but eventually became a very consistent performer and a cult hero for the Reds. At 34, it's Lucas Leiva. Oh, another one I loved and adored. I've got a real soft spot for Lucas Leiva, and he's another one whom, had it not been for injury, might have gone on to even greater things for the club. I seem to always fall in love with players who everyone hates. Came in, long hair, people didn't like him because of that. The long hair and the white boots and John Aldridge couldn't stand him on commentary, so he had to live with that of like, oh, Lucas Leiva. Wasn't liked by the majority of Liverpool fans, was, wasn't deemed good enough. I think we were just expecting this, like some Brazilian flair or magic or whatever, and it just didn't quite click for him. And it's funny because he has a moment in the derby where he comes on for Steven Gerrard and like, wow, like this, that's like a shock decision from, from Benitez. And you're thinking at the time, what is this? Gerrard's face and Carragher's face in that game, like what is going on here? I'll admit even at the time, everyone was going, like, what's Rafa, what's Rafa doing? Why, yeah, why do you take Stevie too, off in this? Too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, that was a, but that was a big, yeah. that, that was a big, uh, that's a decision he's made there, I think. That's a big, a lot of trust that he put in you in that situation. Yeah. And he hits this shot and it's going in and Phil Neville dives and saves it with his hands on the line and robs Lucas of his, um, his sort of coming out goal, as it were. If that ball went in, probably would be a little bit easier for me at the start. <laughs> he was inconsistent at times and he was getting the blame for Liverpool's ills at times, which I think is a bit unfair. To his credit, he stuck it out. He proved his worth. Maybe he didn't have the same potential as a, an Alonso or a Gerrard or a Mascherano, but he didn't ever let that phase him. I, I think to be at the club for over 10 years is something that not a lot of people can say that they've got. He's having a fantastic, he's probably his best season for Liverpool when he picks up the cruciate injury against Chelsea. I always remember that run before the Chelsea game where I thought he was one of the best defensive midfielders in the Premier League for a short while. He'd established himself, you know, he'd managed to give himself a cap 
for Brazil around that time as well, which isn't, you know, back then wasn't an easy thing to achieve. It's never quite the same player after that. We get some really dutiful service from him, covering at DM, covering at centre half for a bit under Klopp. You know, I think for me, Lucas Leiva, when you look back at his entire spell at Liverpool Football Club, he's absolutely deserving to be in this top 50. Very, very underrated. Um, he, he, he gave a lot to the club, and I think he'll always be remembered by people who know what good football looks like. He was an incredible stalwart for the football club. He's a Liverpool football fan now, you can see that. I mean, his son loves Liverpool as well. He still watches the games, but what he did um, in the early parts of Jürgen's reign, I'm sure will be much appreciated by him, uh, by Jürgen himself. Probably another one who falls under that sort of cult status for the club, but yeah, I love Lucas. The youngest player on the list, this local lad was picked out as one to watch by Steven Gerrard and is revolutionising the full-back position as we speak. The youngest man to start two Champions League finals, a world, European and Premier League champion by the age of 22, and with so much more to come, Trent Alexander-Arnold is in at number 12. It's amazing to think that in just a couple of years, a kid who used to be a midfielder who got converted to a right-back is now number 12 on the list of Liverpool's all-time Premier League players. But it's completely understandable too. You wouldn't even say he's a brilliant right-back. He's just a brilliant footballer. You know when he's on the pitch that you've got a world-class player. At such a young age, he's made himself the best right-back in world football. And I think there are some very, very good ones about, not only in Europe, but even just in England. Even England national team have got three or four really top right-backs. But I think Trent's better than all of them. He's had the moments. He's got the trophies on the sideboard. He's won everything that you can that you want to win uh, as a Liverpool player, and he took the corner quickly. That's all you need to say with Trent Alexander Arnold. But he'll be disappointed with twelve, and he'll be fighting to get further up that list and break the top five in the next few years. I'm sure. The club style of football relies heavily on the fullbacks, and without Trent. It just wouldn't work. Every single day you see how much he loves Liverpool Football Club. Every single day you see that and he's got incredible goals in him. He's got unbelievable assists. I mean, hat-tricks of assists. His technique is unmatched. It's as good as anyone we've ever seen in the league. You know, his free kicks are just ridiculous. The moment I think that, I, that it, he kind of broke onto the scene for most people, but when you know you've got a player on your hands, it's Hoffenheim away and we got a free kick, and there's this kid playing right back for us, and he scores the free kick. And I remember the celebrations, I remember um, Tyler, his brother, basically almost like jumping on top of us from behind in, in, in the stadium. And I remember thinking like, fuck me, this is a right back who scores free kicks. Like, that's not meant to happen, you, you can have, Good lads come into midfield and do that, or up front and do that. Fullbacks don't get given the free kicks, and they certainly don't score them if they do. And that was the moment for me. I was like, oh my God, what a talent we've got here. And it's been absolutely proven since. The sheer brilliance and, and thought and probably the maturity of just to go, well, actually, I'm going to do this. You know, again, you're talking about pressures, high intensity, the fact that Divock Origi wasn't even looking at the time, you know, but credit to the ball boy as well to get to give him the ball and, and get it out there quickly. But that could have gone horribly wrong. I, I just feel like it was just meant to be. I don't know what it was, but if this everything about the goal was like, it, I don't think we'll see a goal like it again because it was too... Like per like perfect. If you can, I don't know how to describe it. It was just right. It just from even like Dave knocking the other ball off 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 the pitch, so so that the corner could come in and things like that, and the ball boy putting it on the spot. I wasn't even meant to take the corner. I was I was literally walking away to like go and get into position, and then just seeing it. I mean, Dave didn't. I didn't even shout, Dave. I've just hit it in there, Aaron. If he doesn't turn around, it's just a waste of ball that flies across the box and no one even thinks about it again. He would have been fucking murdered at that fucked up and and lost us an opportunity to score a goal and still had the fucking balls to go and take that corner quickly. It's outstanding and it will be talked about forever. He's added to his game. People still need to remember that he's 
very, very young and that he will get better. You know, if we do this video again in 10 years' time, he might be he might be number two or number one. That's the thing with Trent Alexander-Arnold. A young lad right now, still learning his position, still learning how good he can be. If Liverpool stay on track and maintain momentum, maintain world-class managers, world-class signings, the structure that they've got in place and he's got a team in and around him that can help him achieve success at Liverpool, he should be in the top five. There's a chance that right now he's the best right back in, in world football and he's 22, 23 years old. If he never gets any better, he will be the best right back in the world. In the world. He will be the best right back ever, ever to play for Liverpool. Um, there's a very realistic chance, though, that he's going to get even better, and I have got no idea where his ceiling is. Like he could have a career at Liverpool similar to Gerrard's, where he's here for 15 to 20 years, wins numerous trophies, captains the club, goes on to be amazing for England. Like the fact that he's number 12 on this list and his career is only just in his infancy. By the end of his career, like he could be a top five in this list for sure. Assists for days, big goals, big performances. I think he's the. He's the captain in waiting for Liverpool Football Club. Next up is a man often described as the best they have ever seen by those too young to remember the great sides of the 70s and 80s. Some players score great goals, some players score lots of goals. This man was one of the few who scored lots of great goals. The ultimate competitor, this man could nutmeg a mermaid or score a 30-yard volley. Talented, tenacious, outrageous, number four is Luis Suarez. I think... Luis Suarez is the most talented footballer that Liverpool have ever had. I don't think there was anyone ever as good as him before or since. I have never seen a player like him. I have never seen, like, anywhere, at any level, at any other football team. Everything that he did turned turn to absolute gold, his technical ability, his drive, his determination, his willing to do whatever he could do possible to, to win games of football for Liverpool, to grab games by the scuff of the neck, to make moments of magic from absolutely nothing that, that he shouldn't have done. He didn't just score goals, no, that sounds mad, because if he had just score goals, that would have been more than enough. But he did everything else as well. Aggressive, tackle, pressing, assists. Undying determination to win every ball and contest every moment of a football match is beyond anything. The things he could do were just no one else could do them. He could twist footballers inside and out, his ability to be, to turn into a man and come away with the ball. There is no player who I've, I've enjoyed watching as much as Luis Suarez in 13-14. There's so much joy in watching his best moments for Liverpool. His highlight reel is unlike anything else. He would do things that would make you just laugh, just or make audible noises like, uh, 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 what, how has he done that or why has he done that? I remember being at Norwich when he scored from like the halfway line and he gets the ball and he could just, he, he was one on one, he could have just ran and scored, but he goes, no, just going to chip the goalie from here to score at Attrick. I mean, Norwich must have been sick of the sight of him because every single time he scored against those guys, he scored Attricks and they were all like, you could have a goal of the year contender with just Luis Suarez against Norwich. Poor Norwich. I mean, he single handedly destroyed that football club time and time again. But that volley, my word, 35 yards out, boom, goal. Thank you very much. Good night. The FA Cup semi final. When he, he got us back into that against Everton, again, it was a bad back pass from, from this time. But like, the second Luis Suarez got that ball, we knew he'd scored. The best goal I ever saw at, at Anfield was his goal against Newcastle when uh, Enrique thumped that long, high ball towards the box. And Luis Suarez chested it down, controlled it, shifted his feet and, and slotted into the net, all in one movement, with a defender up his backside at the time he did it. And, you know, that's, that's just genius. Luis Suarez had the aggression and the will to win as well. And sometimes that's all, you know, he, he boiled over. But I think it was just a, a different mentality that that man had. It was win at all costs, I want to win, I want to win. And sometimes it would boil over. But when he, could, when he could keep it just to that level where it needed to be, and he could be just the right amount of dickhead, he was unbelievable. Like as soon as he walked over the white line, he became an animal, and his whole uh, raison d'être was winning. And um, he did anything that came to his mind that would help him do that. He didn't give a fuck, basically. Like, and I think that was almost a bit, almost a scout mentality. It was against the world, and for a fella to come in from Uruguay and have that himself 
was, was probably quite endearing. David Moyes had been calling him calling him out on diving in the build up to this derby game. <laughs> he scores, and the first thing he does, he runs over to the dugout and he dives in front of David Moyes, and then they venture all up in arms. Oh my god, like he just he was he was better than everyone on the pitch and he knew it and he knew he was so good that he even had time to like be like, well when I score, I'm just gonna stick it right in his face as well. Oh my god. So the best thing that ever happened for our relationship with Luis Suarez was in being Luis Suarez at the new camp and celebrating the goal and absolutely igniting the fury in Liverpool's fan base. I love Liverpool's Luis Suarez. Absolutely adores him. One of my favourite players to have ever put on the red shirt. But Luis Suarez for Barcelona, celebrating Messi's free kick? Nah, not into that. I loved booing Suarez in that return leg. I'll be honest, I, I know the way he acted in those Barcelona games pissed a lot of Liverpool fans off. And it makes sense. Like, yeah, you know, he's got Andy Robertson by the throat in a tunnel and he's trying to kick him and he's celebrating goals in front of, of the Liverpool fans and stuff in the new camp. But I'll be honest, like, I don't, I don't hate him for that because he was that for us. This just shows the mentality of the man. I have a, a, a real respect for Luis Suarez as a footballer that actually remains undiminished by his move to Barcelona. Hey guys, so you now know four of the people you voted as Liverpool's greatest Premier League players. If you want to find out all 50 names who made that list, head on over to Redmen Plus now. Part one is streaming as of today, Christmas Eve. Part two is streaming on Christmas Day. And then on Boxing Day, we've got a special edition of our debate show where Paul Ross and James Sutton have a little debate about the names who were on the list. Are they ranked too high? Are they ranked too low? Who's missing? All that kind of stuff as well. Very, very simple if you want to watch those three shows. Head on over to the RedmenTV.com and join Redmen Plus and you'll get to see every single bit of it. Merry Christmas.